Good morning, everybody. Could you please take a seat? So we are going to start the session. Thank you for joining us uh, today. On behalf of ITU, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this open forum on strengthening capacities in international internet governance. My name is Susan Telcher, and I'm head of the capacity building division at the ITU. And this session is, in fact, organized jointly by ITU, Diplo Foundation, and SSIG, who are also with me, with me here on the podium, and they will be introduced in a few moments. So before we start, I'd like to say just a few words about why we are having this session here today. In fact, uh, first of all, what I noticed when I looked at the program of the IGF uh, this, uh, this week, there are actually not a lot of sessions that deal with capacity building or capacity development. And um, maybe this is uh, because people take it for granted because I think everybody agrees that this is core to what we are doing um, when we actually want to achieve um, development in terms of ICT and bridging the digital uh, divide. Um, for those of you who were here yesterday, uh, there was the Geneva Initiative on Capacity Development in Digital Policy that was launched. So that is very much uh, relevant also to the topics that we are discussing here today. So therefore, I think we have a great opportunity today to make a unique contribution to this debate, specif specifically focusing on capacity building and capacity development. And we would like to use the time in the session to look at what are some of the main needs and the gaps when it comes to capacity development, and also hear uh, from the different panelists and also from you what action could or should be taken looking forward to the, to the work in this uh, field. And uh, I would like to mention as a, as a matter of background to this session that earlier this year ITU has published a report called Reviewing Global Internet Governance capacity development and identifying opportunities for collaboration. Now this is a very long title, but in essence, uh, the report provides a very comprehensive overview of the core topics that are related to internet governance and then looks at actually who is doing what in the field of capacity uh, development and what are some of the needs and gaps that we need to address looking forward. And uh, this report, in fact, was commissioned to uh, two consultants and it was led by Diplo Foundation. I, I recommend if you would like to look at some of the mapping of what is currently out there in capacity development and internet governance, please take a look um, at this report, which is available on the ITU Academy website. So one of the key guiding principles in this uh, report was to keep the multi-stakeholder approach. And this is uh, also our guiding principle in ITU in our work on international on internet governance capacity building. This is why here today we, have, uh, we are organizing this session together with other key stakeholders in this field. So with this, I would like now to introduce our moderator Mrs. Constance Bommelar, she's the Senior Director of Global Internet Policy at ISOC. I think uh, you probably all know her. Uh, mm -hmm. She has been on many sessions uh, this week, and it's my great pleasure, and thank you so much, uh, Constance, for having accepted our invitation to moderate the session, and I'll give the floor to you. Thank you very much, Susan, and uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you also for organizing uh, what I think is a very important session. Uh, to present an update on, on this report. We've seen throughout the week the importance of internet governance discussions. We're also seeing uh, that they're gaining in importance. You just read the press and you understand that as the internet impacts all fields, all aspects of people's lives, people, citizens, users, young people are more and more interested in understanding the governance of the internet, but also understanding how they can participate and make sure that they, they can shape their digital future, they can make decisions uh, for themselves. So thank you again for um, presenting this report and, and, and organizing uh, this session. This session is also an opportunity with our distinguished panelists to um, uh, dive a little deeper, uh, look into um, 
some of the concrete issues, questions that professionals in this field have bumped into. Uh, are we really using the right uh, methodology, the right tools? Uh, communication techniques evolve every day. This is also an invitation for some of us, Diplo Foundation, the Internet Society, the ITU, many organizations involved in internet governance capacity building to continuously um, uh, reassess, uh, test our methodologies and make sure we are delivering the best service possible to our different uh, stakeholders. The other important question I would say really is, are we reaching the right targets? Uh, the, the, the risk in some of these uh, fora is that we may be talking to people who have already been uh, evangelized, who already know our uh, different networks, uh, who have an idea of how to reach some of us here in uh, the room and who can facilitate access to capacity building tools and opportunities. So for those of us who are interested in uh, capacity building, I think the ongoing challenge is really thinking, how can I reach the next person? How can I reach the next community who doesn't necessarily know yet that um, they should be involved uh, further in internet governance, but really inviting and facilitating the participation of those, uh, those emerging, uh, those emerging uh, stakeholders. So to have this conversation today, we have um, a distinguished uh, panel. Uh, Susan uh, Telscher, who uh, has introduced uh, the, the session, head of Human Capacity Building uh, Division at the ITU. We have Teresa uh, Horzezova, uh, Project Director Development at uh, Diplo Foundation. Uh, Olga Cavalli, co-founder and academic director of the South School on Internet Governance. Uh, Khalil Huba, who is a board member at uh, ICANN and Tracy Hackshaw, ICT and uh, digital economy strategist. And with this, I think we can really dive into the conversation. And I think my first question would be for, for Susan, um, based on the findings of uh, this report that you had uh, published and, and, and updated and shared with us again, I think I'd like to ask you, what, what are the salient points? What are really the, the main conclusions that will be guiding your, week, your work for the next uh, six to 12 months? Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Constance. Um, and uh, well, one thing that uh, we found in the report, which is, by the way, more than 100 pages, it's really comprehensive, is there's a lot going on in this field. So there are a lot of different uh, stakeholders and entities that are actually doing work in capacity building and internet governance. And uh, both international regional organizations, the internet technical community, private sector, academia, the schools on internet governance, everybody is involved in this. So um, there's a lot out there and uh, different topics are being covered. So what the report finds, what is really well covered in terms of um, the, the topics, let's say, is first of all uh, basics in terms of how the internet works. Uh, then also when it comes to uh, delivering technical knowledge on infrastructure protocols and standards, uh, also, the issue of how internet can strengthen citizens' participation is covered quite well. Most attention actually gets uh, cybersecurity when we look across the different uh, stakeholders and uh, in terms of what they are um, focusing on in their capacity with development. And in terms of the academic programs, the topic that is mostly addressed there is related to legal issues. So this is sort of uh, what, uh, what in terms of the topics that are well covered. Then um, the report also shows that there are very different approaches on how capacity building or development is actually being delivered from one to two day workshops to the summer schools to actually entire academic programs uh, at the master's uh, degree level uh, where you can get uh, yeah, masters in, in internet policy related issues or cybersecurity or what have you. The target audience are very diverse, uh, and we really need to look at that. I'll come back to that in, in, a, in a minute. Uh, some, uh, it's to users, to policymakers, to businesses, so it's actually quite diverse, and something needs to be done to, to improve that. But what then uh, the report really looks at, uh, it looks at the demand and the supply side. So it looks at what is currently out there, what are the gaps, and where which should we refocus uh, in the future. So some of the gaps that it finds with respect to the target audience 
is that we really need to target the um, training at uh, different levels. So uh, we have to distinguish between introductory, intermediary, and advanced levels because participants also differ, and if we all mix them together, we are not uh, getting the right uh, 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 impact. We also need to target different audiences. So this course is for policymakers, this is for legislators, this is for SMEs, for marginalized communities, so we have to also, that's also something that is not yet uh, uh, very um, um, organized uh, along this, uh, these lines. Then there are a few things in terms of the uh, delivery methods and because the, the report also looks at how capacity building is delivered, what methodologies are actually being used. So uh, there's a recommendation to, um, to be more specific of what is really a course versus what is a, uh, uh, like a workshop. Uh, focus more on e-learning and online tools. And also the issue of multilingual is a big gap because almost uh, most of what is being done now in capacity building is, uh, is in English. So that's something that needs to be addressed as well. In, in terms of the topics, there are some rec recommendations, including that a human rights perspective should be applied across all the areas that are covered. So right now it's quite segmented. This is focusing on this topic, this topic, this topic, but uh, the links are often not there and some issues such as the rights issues, they should be covered across all the different uh, areas that are being delivered. Another uh, issue that the report finds and makes recommendations is to combine technical and policy aspects in the delivery, so not to address them independently like is often done, including also by ITU, focused very much on technical issues, but often uh, in the capacity development these are disconnected and they should be combined because they, they should be uh, considered uh, in a more holistic uh, approach. Then there is a gap in terms of topics on everything that's uh, related to the new evolving uh, infrastructures and technologies, including IoT, cloud computing, big data, and machine learning. I think that's not a big surprise because these are evolving topics, and, um, and that should be considered further in, in the future. Now specifically for ITU, and this is something we are now looking into in our work in the future, there are some recommendations that we should um, be more proactive in convening a multi-stakeholder dialogue. So for all the stakeholders involved in this capacity development field uh, to bring together either physically, and we are trying to do this through sessions like this one and, um, and others, sorry, closer to the microphone. And, um, and also online, and uh, we have actually an online portal, the ITU Academy, and uh, we, we are using this uh, to create a space where we can bring together under, uh, on one side, uh, all the different activities that are being carried out and capacity building across the different uh, uh, stakeholder groups. Another recommendation was to focus on, on policy makers. This is also the ITU membership. Uh, so this is obviously also the mandate of the ITU to have as the main target group policymakers and legislators. And then uh, in the development and delivery of our activities to work very closely with other stakeholders. This is also our priority. And if we go to the regional levels to adapt it to the regional priorities, we have started to do this uh, in, uh, through um, a regional workshop we, we delivered this year jointly with Diplo in the Americas region where we also try to target specifically the priorities in that um, region. Then some of the other recommendations include, um, I mentioned that before, to encourage a rights-based approach and include that in the uh, topics that are being uh, uh, covered by the trainings and uh, the workshops, to have a comprehensive multidisciplinary approach. In the past, uh, we have very much focused only on targeted technical issues, but that that should be moved towards a more comprehensive and holistic view and uh, topics covered to work more with universities. This is a priority in ITU in general. We have academia members and we are trying to work more with um, academic institutions in general in our capacity building work 
including on internet governance. We had a meeting with academia last September in Budapest with more than 36 universities, and one of the featured topics was also internet governance. So we are trying to, um, to look into, uh, these are just some of the recommendations, there are others. We are just looking into some of these and taking them forward in our uh, work in the future. And um, I will close here at this stage and I look forward to hearing uh, perhaps other suggestions from you in this regard uh, later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's very useful, I think, at this stage to have a, a clear idea, thanks to the study of the, the current strengths, but also the, the possible gaps in the capacity building uh, landscape. Teresa, maybe I'll, I'll turn to you because Diplo has been operating in this field for uh, a number of years. Uh, Diplo is recognized really as a leading institution in this field, so your, your insights are very precious uh, from that perspective. What are the main gaps? What are the, the main needs that need to be addressed according to you? Thank you. Thank you very much, Constance, and thank you also, Susan and the ITU, for the opportunity to work with you on the report, which really brought attention to some of the, the crucial, uh, crucial issues uh, when it goes to the gaps and needs uh, that, uh, that you have summarized a few, uh, few minutes ago. Uh, Constance, you asked me about uh, the developing countries and their needs in particular, and I'm sure we will hear much more from Tracy then. But um, obviously, these countries are disadvantaged by, by definition. It may be because of the size, it might be because of the availability of the in-house expertise to, uh, to, to provide the training. It might be simply because uh, there, uh, there might be more pressing issues, so to say, uh, to, um, uh, to deal with rather than internet governance. It has to do with remoteness. It has to do with the language issue that, uh, that Susan uh, has highlighted. And um, uh, a topic that I think shouldn't be avoided, uh, it's also a question of resources. For instance, what, uh, we, have, uh, what we have found out um, in the work of, uh, of Diplo Foundation, uh, one of the best uh, learning uh, or training uh, takes place by immersion, by attending meetings like the IGF. And it is it's very difficult for, uh, for some developing countries, not only governments, but of course other stakeholders to even justify participation of meetings uh, uh, of this kind. Um, it is also another problem uh, that we shouldn't shy away from naming is also the availability of neutral capacity development and, and training activities. Uh, how do uh, countries that are disadvantaged make sure that the training they are getting is, uh, is balanced? We also would like to stress that uh, there is definitely a need for kind of longer term uh, capacity development uh, activities because while shorter half day training or briefing sessions are excellent and useful, um, the real learning takes place uh, if, it's, uh, if it's of a longer, a longer term uh, nature. Another uh, very important need that should be addressed uh, is to tailor uh, the training to the specific region, specific country, and specific stakeholder group, but also specific level, because there is a difference if the training is delivered, let's say, uh, at the level of the ministers, who might also need to uh, raise their capacities, or at the level uh, of, uh, of staff and officials uh, that are just entering uh, the world of internet governance and digital policy. One model that the Diplo, for instance, has, uh, has tried to push for and implement and that has proven quite efficient is uh, start with online learning, followed, like, let's say, by very practical policy research experience and followed by, by a true immersion, be it at a meeting of this kind or uh, at, um, at a different uh, type of meeting. Uh, coming back to the, to the question of resources, I would like to touch upon kind of uh, the elephant in the room and that is who pays? Who has the responsibility? Because good capacity development activities do need resources. But who does the responsibility to finance, finance this lie with? Uh, how can we uh, ensure that capacity developments are sufficiently funded? Because this is not a 1,000 euro uh, question. Um, uh, how do we achieve diversity among the capacity development providers? What responsibility should lie, I don't know, with the private sector, with the government themselves? or with the providers, uh, this, really, this really is, uh, is an essential issue. And I would maybe uh, close by that um, 
Grail, there are many organizations dealing with, with capacity development, and I would like to appreciate the work of that ISOC is doing, ICANN, uh, the, the, the ITU, the Global Forum on, on Cyber Expertise, which is really a pioneer uh, in, these, um, uh, in these regards. Uh, there should be more uh, synchronization. Uh, I can say that we, we do talk uh, with each other and try to complement each other, but, uh, but we can do, uh, we can do uh, still more. And um, I, will probably, I will probably stop here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Teresa. I think uh, what I'm hearing is uh, the importance of being neutral and definitely inclusive in our approach to uh, capacity uh, building. And this raises the question of making sure that we reach developing countries and, and LDCs, of course. Um, from that perspective, I've been wondering, are, are there specific methodologies we should be uh, applying to those specific communities? And perhaps this is a question where, Olga, you can help us with. This table is so huge. I'm so short. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for uh, inviting me, and thanks for, for organizing this interesting session. And also commend ITU for, for doing that report, which we contributed with our uh, experience and also thanks to Diplo and to ISOC for all the work that you do about this issue. Mm, I would like to share with you our experience in the South School of Internet Governance. Uh, we will have our 10th year uh, in 2018 and why we thought it was a good idea in 2008 because we looked at the statistics of participation of Latin America and the Caribbean in the IGF and in other meetings, and it was the lowest of all the regions, even lower than Africa. Mm -hmm. So we started to analyze what, why, what was happening, and it was not only a question of funding, but also a question of not knowing what was it about, how should they participate, why they should be interested in that, uh, at all multi-stakeholder multi levels. So it was an issue for governments, for civil society, for universities. So this is why we thought this was a good idea to create this school. So the objective of the school it has been always enhancing the participation of the Latin America and Caribbean region in all the internet governance debate spaces and participation spaces. And of course, try to train the future leaders of the internet governance that could come from Latin America and the Caribbean. So the focus of our school has been always outreach, trying to reach as much uh, fellows as possible. And I'm not only talking about young people, they are young people, that we have never had an uh, age limit. We want to include all, all, the, all the people in, in, the, in the ecosystem. Other thing that we decided from day zero was rotating among countries. This is a huge work, but it's worth the effort because every time you go to a different country, you raise the awareness in that country. It had happened that after we had uh, organized the school in a country, the first IGF was organized or within the school or after the school, or uh, ISOC chapters were organized after the school, or perhaps in some governments, a special area, to deal with internet governance was created after the school. So we, we, we found that rotation among countries extremely valuable for bringing the message to the different communities. Um, other thing that we uh, do is we do an open call for participation. We don't have a special budget for promoting the school. So we use social networks. We use uh, all of our, our people that know us uh, in, in the community. And then the selection of the fellows, which we, we get like 500 about that uh, applications, is made as by a special committee of experts and the local host, which plays a relevant role. And we try to build a group of fellows as much diverse as possible in relation with where they come from, the countries that they represent, language, stakeholders, and age. Of course, 50-50 gender balance from day zero. That's my rule from day zero. Uh, also, we always had simultaneous translation because the language barrier is a big issue in Latin America. Many people can read English uh, or maybe can understand, but perhaps they have difficulties in understanding as a native speaking person from United States or Europe. So uh, the, all the schools from day one 
had simultaneous tran translation English, Spanish, and the two times we have organized it in Brazil, once in Sao Paulo in 2010 and once in this year in, in Rio de Janeiro in Fundacion Getulio Vargas, we had tran translation, simultaneous translation in three languages, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So we think that's very important. Also, since 2012, we started to have remote participation. So all the school, uh, the school we organize is open to everyone. If you cannot uh, get the fellowship, you can uh, follow it online. Uh, also, we have video streaming and channels in the languages we have in the room. So it's English, Spanish, or English, Spanish, and Portuguese. This year, we also added a different thing. It's also in YouTube. You can go and check all the sessions in YouTube channel of the school and Getulio Vargas Foundation in the three languages. So if you're interested in the content, maybe you can see it afterwards because everything is online. Um, what else? Uh, so, how, so far we have trained on site more than 2,000 fellows. Many of them are very highly involved in different organizations. Some of them are already leaders and some others are involved. And we have no idea how many thousands we have trained online, but, but that's, uh, that's also a nice thing to have in mind. Um, nobody pays for participating in the school. We grant fellowships to all the students and we, they get hotel and meals and the training course, but nobody pays for that. Uh, in, in, we had some exceptions that we paid uh, tickets, but that's, we, we don't have that budget for that. But sometimes if there's a limitation from one or two students, we can do that. Um, um, so, um, we are launching a book about the experience of the last 10 years. It's Internet Governance in the Americas. And we, we, what we have learned from the experience, and maybe I stop here, the great value for the students is the network that they get at the end. Among them, because that remains, they still have their own uh, WhatsApp groups and their own um, online uh, groups and the network that they create with the with the experts that they usually share more than one one time in, in a panel they share a lunch they share a coffee they share a dinner during the five days uh, of intensive training so after they finish they that should be the first approach to the internet governance then they have their own network to go perhaps to uh, uh, ICANN Fellowship or ISOC Fellowship or ISAC Ambassador or to, to get a more in-deep uh, training from Diplo. And I think I'll stop here and maybe there are questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Olga. It's really very useful to have these concrete examples, feedback on uh, how you do this uh, in the field, uh, training involving targeting the right audiences. Um, so we've, we've talked a lot about involving developing countries in, in LDCs and in capacity building programs. Um, and the purpose, of course, is to make sure uh, they are fully equipped to participate in a meaningful way, not only in intergovernmental uh, conversations, but also in other, I would say, internet governance conversations that can take place or are organized by either the business community or, or the technical community. Khaled, you are very uh, actively involved in some of the conversations, for instance, uh, that take place in, in, uh, in the ICANN. Uh, circles. W what, from your perspective, would be the, the, the target audience that we need to involve better in some of these uh, capacity building efforts? <coughs> thank you, uh, Constance, and thank you, um, ITU and Diplo, for asking ICANN to contribute to this uh, workshop. Uh, clearly, um, as we have seen and heard in many uh, other workshop sessions in, the, in Geneva, those days, capacity development is very important uh, um, uh, element. So um, ICANN, of course, has a, a very specific role within the internet governance ecosystem, um, and we are not responsible for general uh, internet issues, nor for the content. Um, we do uh, sort of engage with other bodies, uh, whether a technical community, such as ISOC or regional internet registry, or internet international bodies, such as the UN Office of Drugs and Crimes, or the ITU uh, to provide trainings uh, on DNS issues. Uh, a couple of examples uh, uh, to uh, illustrate that point. Um, first, we um, have worked with the Commonwealth Secretariat in London on uh, cybercrime training in developing countries, particularly 
With respect to governments, police and judiciary, um, we also uh, had the uh, chance to work with the UN Office uh, of Drugs and Crime in Asia, um, again to train uh, on law enforcement officers uh, and the judiciary on the DNS and how uh, to track criminal activity with respect to domains. Uh, we also have uh, done a lot of uh, capacity building workshops for uh, GAC representative, the Governmental uh, Advisory uh, Council and the ICANN. Um, the aim of those workshops, in fact, is to uh, close the gap of the technical knowledge between some GAC members, uh, especially coming from the uh, uh, developing countries uh, and other uh, ICANN constituencies uh, and avoid the lost in translation situation that we face uh, that we have faced in the past uh, we did um, somehow um, until now great number of those workshops uh, in 2017 we did one in kenya one in south africa and one in uh, recently in abu dhabi in, uh, in dubai in, um, in uae um, and in the future uh, we will be having four workshops um, beginning february 2018 um, uh, until june uh, one in nepal puerto rico senegal and panama um, on another uh, level also more general level um, i personally believe that uh, when it comes to strengthening the uh, ig capacity for policy makers it's important that the, um, the different players coordinate together we all have our part of the, uh, to, to play and have limited resources. Uh, this duplication is simply counterproductive for everyone. Um, in the same way as ICANN would not do training on data protection or human rights, we would not expect UN agency to do training on the DNS. Um, on a very personal le uh, level, uh, an experience that I, I personally um, had in the past few months in Tunisia, we organized uh, the first time the Tunisia School on Internet Governance. And we did it, in fact, um, the day before the national IGF. The idea was to train a few newcomers on the concept of the, uh, I, uh, the Internet Governance and put them the day after into practice by attending the national IGF. I think this is a very important element um, to try to mix the theory and the learning and the capacity building with practicing the IGF. Um, I think not only uh, providing the theory will help, but also help anyone to attend regional IGF, national IGF, global IGF. This will make uh, easy for him to understand who are the players, what are the issues. Uh, this is the most important part. I think. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Khaled. I, I, I like your expression, avoiding to be lost in translation. I think uh, the, the expression is... Uh, it's self-explanatory, it really uh, is about uh, the mission of any capacity building uh, exercise and, and effort. Um, the, the IGF is also actually a good place to not only learn, but also spot some of the emerging internet-related issues uh, that suddenly we realize we need to build more knowledge uh, about, we need to explore uh, further to make sure that uh, we as professionals, but also as stakeholders will be able to um, participate in a, in a meaningful way in, in any of these, uh, these conversations. Tracy, uh, as, a, as an ICT strategist, but also I believe as a, an individual who's experienced some of these uh, fellowships, ambassadorships, uh, training opportunities, I, I believe you were actually one of the Internet Society's ambassadors to the IGF. Uh, and perhaps you've also been involved in other uh, programs organized by, by Diplo or other institutions. Uh, what are the, according to you, the, the most important pressing issues uh, that you feel perhaps coming out of this IGF week uh, you need to build more capacity on or you also think uh, in general stakeholders should be learning more about? Yeah, so thank you very much and thanks for the invitation on this panel um, from the ITU and Diplo. And yes, I think um, maybe I'm the only person on the panel who has been exposed to training from ICANN, ITU, ISOC, South School, and from Diplo. So I'm a, <laughs> I can speak from that. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a capacity built person um, and from a developing country. So um, I speak from that perspective. I'm from Tran Tobago in the Caribbean, which is a small and developing state. I'm also one of the developing countries, quote unquote. And um, one of the things you have to recognize, I think, is in our part of the world, 
Um, we talk about the 3-point-odd billion who are online, but the majority of the 3.9 who are not online are from the developing world. And so some of the issues for internet governance, um, um, capacity building, relate to bringing those people online still. Um, so not only do we have to deal with the issues of being online, but also getting online. So by that I am. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be brief in my, my, um, my topics. I think the first issue that we still need to address in this part of, our, uh, uh, of the globe are still issues related to access and accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, strictly speaking, access, as I said, we are part of 3.9 billion who are not yet online, but, but still accessibility from all levels. So both in terms of the um, you know, traditional person with disabilities type of accessibility issues, but also it's getting the last mile access. So in many parts of our countries, we are still fraught with challenges of getting last mile access um, beyond the cities. So we are rurally dis dislocated and getting to an internet cafe or getting to some internet hotspot um, proves to be challenging still for persons who are um, older, persons who are living in, in socially or economically challenged situations and so on. So accessibility from that res respect. Moving beyond that, uh, once we get online, digital literacy is still a major issue and leading from that local content production. So again, in our part of the world, a challenge has always been that we are consumers of content as opposed to producers of content. So we need some strengthening in, in the ability to understand how to utilize tools that already exist or build new tools where they don't exist in our languages or in our um, own context to produce content that is more contextually mm -hmm. relevant to our mm -hmm. nations and our societies. And linked to that digital inclusion, so I, I spoke briefly about the accessibility issue before, but truth be told, um, the internet is still not seen as a priority for many governments. I think Teresa brought that point up, um, up earlier. So priorities of water, roads, um, crime, social issues are always higher up on a totem pole. So how do you bring digital inclusion to the table? So if we could get strengthening both at the level of, of the grassroots and, and um, stakeholders in that level, as well as governments in digital inclusion, I think that's important. Uh, again, I'm going down this relate, relatable, related list. Growing and participating in the local and global digital economy and internet economy. So how do you participate in the economy, uh, both from a, a DNS, using the ICANN example, perspective, into just from the level of domain name, um, sales, um, getting that up and running in terms of uh, GTLDs, as well as going straight up to the becoming a, a, a startup in a, doing an, an Uber in your particular jurisdiction or not, um, building your own apps that are contextual to your, uh, your, your situation, and simply participating from the standpoint of seeing the digital economy as an avenue for uh, employment opportunities. We don't see that yet in many parts of the developing world. So that's something that I think there's some opportunity for some capacity building in, both from the level of, again, the, employee, the employed individual as well as the business people who are looking to branch off into other areas. And two linked final areas, use and increasing resilience of critical infrastructure, including critical internet infrastructure. Um, again, in developing world, those issues are put on the back burner. Um, we saw recently in the Caribbean um, and, and in the Pacific, not too far back, hurricanes passing through and decimating the entire infrastructure. And in some parts of that, uh, the Caribbean, we're not back up yet. Um, islands have been flattened, flattened. People have moved out of the islands. There's nobody living there again. Um, cell towers completely thrown down. Um, ISPs out, out of business, so to speak. And how do you bring, come from that level to become a participant in the economy again. And these are fundamental issues that uh, we need some additional capacity building in and understanding how to get to that level. And of course, um, surrounding all of this, cybersecurity. So we are very vulnerable to, um, to, to issues related to regional um, hacks. Many of our businesses are linked um, because they are single banks or single ISPs there are many branches with single data centers in one island or another. And once something happens in 
one island or one part of the country in a least developed state, it, it um, snowballs and, and dominoes effects into other um, branches. So you can be easily affected by one single attack. How do we deal with things like that? Are, are there skills in the country to deal with that? And, and can we build those skills quickly enough so that we can better prepare ourselves for the coming uh, challenges that we face? So I think that's in a nutshell that's how I wanted to address this. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tracy. And before we move to the room to see if any of you have uh, questions and, and, and suggestions, I think I'm going to allow myself to ask you a second question because you're a very unique individual for us. You've gone through all these uh, capacity building uh, programs that we run. Um, and if you had any specific suggestion on how we can improve our programs, and I'm speaking from uh, with my Internet Society hat, uh, I would be uh, extremely uh, uh, interested in, in those thoughts. So um, one of the things that I think that, um, right, so right now I'm actually involved with the ISOC Youth at IGF um, fellowship program. I'm, I'm the mentor for that um, on the ground here. And one of the things I think that will help um, the ambassadorship, the mentorship, the e-learning programs that all these um, agencies have, uh, it was mentioned briefly in several statements, is how do you make the link from the, the training and the learning that you get to the practical? How do you make it more meaningful to people? Uh, something usually with immersion. Mm -hmm. How do you make it more meaningful in terms of coming to an event or, or participating in an event? And I think there's an opportunity for not just bringing people to the event, which is important, but also trying to shepherd them into meaningful roles within that event itself. So, for example, using youth as, as, as an example, um, getting youth onto panel discussions from the Youth at IGF Fellowship I think is extremely important. I know there are youth sessions. I know there are separate sessions for youth. That's great. But how do you mainstream the youth perspective into main sessions, into, the, into this room, on, the, on this panel? And I think there are opportunities for all of the capacity building uh, up, um, um, programs to lead from their, 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 their graduates from the programs to bring them onto sessions like this. And I think that's important because they need to see the, the, the value of what they have learned bring it to the table, bring the experiences to the table. And I think that's an improvement that we can make today, yeah. I think the point you make is very important because it shows very clearly that capacity building uh, programs are not just, uh, you know, the conversation is not just an academic conversation. How, we, how can we improve the quality from an academic perspective? But it shows that these programs, the value is really to strengthen some of these internet governance mechanisms. Uh, we will not have a vibrant multi-stakeholder ecosystem if people are not empowered to participate in a meaningful uh, way. So the, the point you made about uh, how do we bring in youth, how do we make sure that youth is not having a conversation on its own in a separate workshop session, but rather actually weaved into a conversation with business leaders, with intergovernment organizations, with leaders from civil society, I think is absolutely uh, a valuable point. So we have on this panel um, a number of people who work for organizations who run capacity building uh, programs. I'm sure in the room we have people who would like to benefit from such programs, who perhaps uh, have experienced some of the uh, programs that were offered by some of these organizations. Uh, so perhaps we can turn to the, to, the, to the floor now and see if there are any questions, comments, uh, or even suggestions on uh, how to um, improve any of these uh, activities and, and curricula. Any questions from the room? Yes, please, and please uh, briefly introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Sandra Hoferichter. I'm the coordinator of the European Summer School on Internet Governance. Um, I want to bring to your attention, and maybe some of you, I'm sure some of you know already, that uh, during this IGF on day zero, we founded a dynamic coalition on schools on internet governance. Um, as it is mentioned in the report, a lot of schools have uh, emerged over the last year, and this is a very good trend. Um, the brand SIG, School on Internet Governance, is uh, um, known uh, in this internet governance area quite well. 
And uh, we would like to achieve with this uh, dynamic coalition uh, collaboration among the schools to improve uh, the learning material, to um, actually create a sort of a brand and uh, allow for a better collaboration among the schools on internet governance. And everyone in the room who is interested to uh, help us to develop this further is very much welcome. Um, I guess it will be soon listed under dynamic coalitions on the IGF website. And um, I invite everyone here in the room to join that dynamic coalition. Thank you. Teresa, would you like to react to that? Yeah, I think, uh, thank you for for mentioning that, and I think it's an excellent effort. Um, when we were talking about synchronization, from my point of view, um, I would also stress that we need to go beyond just the schools of internet governance, per se, because there are more uh, types of training, and the kind of synchronization and coordination, in my view, is extremely desirable across all the formats of training. Olga, please. Thank you, Constance, and of course we we welcome the creation of the dynamic coalition that would um, not only help us coordinating, but also help us learning from each of the different experiences, because we focus different regions, different target audiences, in different languages with different cultures, and each of it has a different issue to share with others that could enhance. What we have learned also about the about the general program, it has evolved. I think uh, Tracy mentioned that. It has evolved maybe from more technical issues into things more related with public policy like uh, human rights, freedom of expression, cybersecurity. And so this, this year we, we launched the National School of Argentina, which was extremely successful. And uh, also, the next one in 2018, we plan to make it really focused in cybersecurity, freedom of expression, and, and privacy. And with two types of, of activities, uh, lectures and also a, a workshop uh, directly trying to simulate developing, uh, working on policy documents. Um, of course, the experience in, in being in the IGF is unique. You may tell people many things about the IGF or ICANN, uh, but then you have to go into the session. And I think Khaled mentioned that having the kind of this um, uh, capacity buildings before the, some of the, of the real uh, meetings could be extremely helpful because you have all that information in that moment and then you jump into it. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's for the moment my comment. Thank you very much, Olga. Are there any other questions or comments? panelists yes please thank you uh, my name is Predipta I'm from Indonesia I'm coming with the Internet Society youth at IGF fellowship um, I'm really uh, first of all I'd like to be grateful for the opportunity given to me by uh, having me here and having the opportunity to learn about IGF the question that I would like to raise to the panelists would be um, if the panelists and oh no, if the stakeholders such government CSO has already provided the training, the capacity building, and um, it is of course the youth will have the the venue, the platform to get their aspiration. But um, unfortunately, if there is a condition where youth cannot get the venue to express the aspiration, what would be the best approach to? Uh, remind or to um, asking, hey, shouldn't we have the uh, opportunity, the chance to showcase what you have given to us, what our expertise at? I mean, you itself has their own expertise. Like we have, we are the most, uh, we are the largest number of YouTubers. We have the Instagram endorsement, and we, we all have, we have some expertise and experience that may be useful as well to internet governance and how, how to ensure that the commitment of giving the opportunity to the youth can be done. Thank you. The, the, the question, and correct me if I didn't understand it uh, correctly, um, but uh, if I'm understanding how can we facilitate the integration of youth in these capacity building programs, and you're also saying that in any case, uh, youth is probably better connected 
than other generations, and you will find a way uh, to express uh, your thoughts, to uh, share your ideas on YouTube, to make sure that your point of view is is taken on board. I, is that it? No, I mean, sorry. Um, what, I, what I mean is, we as one of the stakeholder, I, I, I feel that we as stakeholder should have the opportunity, right, like what Tracy said, to have, uh, to be on the panel, to, to be able to share our aspiration. But what if we do not have that opportunity? What would be the best uh, way to remind or best approach to to uh, demand it to, to demand the opportunity to have the uh, to share our aspiration and to share our experience on it yeah thank you thank you very much for bringing up the important uh, aspect of the of youth uh, which in fact is also a topic that uh, ITU is specifically uh, focusing on. We have uh, actually a program specifically looking at um, how to reach out to the youth. Uh, and I think there's two sides to it. I mean, you, you talked about how youth can actually be on this side. <laughs> there's also the other side of how actually to reach out to youth and make sure that they are also being trained. So I think we need to look at both of these angles. Um, we have programs that are looking specifically on training for youth, um, which is the other side uh, of it to make sure because uh, uh, in the future that's one of the main issues in, in most of the developing countries, how to ensure that uh, youth are being uh, trained in terms of the ICT skills and the digital skills. So that's a very important part of the capacity building as well. But on the other hand, when we actually do and do workshops to also have uh, young people present on, on the other side and share, uh, share their own uh, experience and their own views. And I think that's, uh, that's a very important uh, point and we are also trying to do that and we are very welcome to, to suggestions uh, on how to, how to reach out and to which organi organizations so we can, um, we can make that link to have youth re represented on both sides uh, as a user, but also as part of the um, delivery experts, let's say, to share their own experiences and uh, the, the issues that are of importance, uh, important to, to them. So I think that's, uh, that's a very good point. Thank you very much for bringing that up. So y your question has triggered now a lot of interest from our panelists, so obviously it's a very good question. I think we had Olga who wanted to react and then the others. Thank you, Constance. Using my ISO hat now, uh, you have the special interest of youth. That's a, uh, that's a very good place where you can participate online or in, in they, they organize, they are present, vividly present in this IGF because they are a large group and um, there, there are youth, uh, young participants from all over the world, that's one place. Also, have in mind that uh, you have the possibility of remote participating in many, many of the events now. Before it was rarely, but now you can participate in ICANN meetings, in the IGF, in our School of Internet Governance. I think Diplo also have a lot of uh, online resources, so use the internet uh, as you very well know how to use it. Thank you. Thank you, and Tracy, please. So I, I'm a big fan of being very bold. So if you are not on a panel, you can't get on a panel, stop us after the panel and get your views across. Yeah. Uh, stop us in the corridor, stop us at the, at the cafeteria, stop us in the elevator. Say, no, this is what I, I've heard this in your session. This is not um, exactly what we believe. This is the context that we want to operate in. Here's what I want to do. Let me sit with you. Let's have a discussion. I have some friends who want to talk to you. Vincent, Constance, let's talk. Because the, the one of the things that people fail to realize is that we're all humans. So everybody here will listen. They're not going to walk past you. And I think it's important for youth, if you're not brought to the table, but you should demand that you get to the table, then you find a way to at least get the <laughs> what the dessert. So if you're not, if you're not getting the, the main meal, get at least the dessert. And um, don't be afraid to ask questions and to interrogate. I think that's one of the things that maybe youth may have a challenge with, that you feel a little bit intimidated or, or la lack some confidence. Just do it, you know, make it happen and, and get it done because the next IGF, they remember you. They say, oh, no, let's, let me, that guy or that girl, yeah, let me <laughs> reach out to them and let me get them on the panel because you'll be surprised that many of the panelists would love to have you there 
but they don't know who you are, how to reach you. So make yourself known, make your presence known, and I think that's a good important. It, it, it starts it now. Yep. So actually, I think I'm going to take your word for it. If you would like to come and seat at my seat, and I'm going to finish moderating the session from the room, please. <laughs> And I think Teresa wanted to make a general suggestion. Yeah, I, I just got one idea on the kind of synchronization aspects. Yeah, it has uh, it has kind of been clear that uh, that many of us appreciate uh, uh, the immersion opportunities. And for instance, what has happened to me before the IGF? Well, there are many organizations offering some kind of fellowships. And what has happened to me before the IGF? I was approached uh, by some of our. Uh, alumni members, hey Teresa, sorry it didn't work out uh, with this organization or that, would you maybe have some means? I think all of the organizations, many of us sitting at this table, had some avenues how to bring some people in. For instance, for Diplo, we had now some fellowship for people from very specific country, specific region. Why don't we uh, like pull together before major events to which we are bringing people, say, hey, listen, I could bring that number of people maybe from these countries, these stakeholder groups, and then it might be also uh, much more efficient for the, uh, for the use, uh, for the kind of participants that, uh, that we are funding uh, in a kind of uncoordinated way, and it could be very practical solution. But over back to you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, uh, so now, because I am acting as the moderator, I would like to invite more commenter and uh, <laughs> question <laughs> from the floor. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, please, sir. Lost my thing. Um, Adam Peak from ICANN, and uh, my, my role at ICANN is to help with civil society and academic engagement. So uh, this is very relevant to what we do. Um, and we do have structure. ICANN, of course, has a mission to develop um, policies for the domain name system. So we, we don't have a, a, a broad remit to uh, include, say, for example, youth speci specifically. Um, but we do try to encourage young people to get involved. One of, the, one of the problems is that we're not a university, so we're not teaching people how to be policy experts. What we're trying to take is people with <laughs> policy skills um, and then helping them develop policy for the specific area of the domain name system. Um, and we do that through a very structured program of fellowships. We bring, we have three meetings a year. So we're talking about immersion. Um, we have three meetings a year around the world, and we bring around 60 uh, people to those, uh, each of those meetings as fellows. And um, so that, that there's been about 1,000 people who've been, uh, so far, who've been brought into this uh, system through, through that. Um, and uh, the idea is that they're, they're not just left to roam free in the meeting. Um, they have coaches and mentors who help guide them. So if they're people from a government, then they have people from uh, governmental experience with people like Tracy who would pick up a couple of people and, and help guide them through the meeting. Uh, we also have a next gen program and uh, next generation. And this is more youth oriented. Um, people between the ages of 18 and, uh, 18 and 30 um, who are all in full time acad uh, uh, education. Uh, and we bring between 20 and 30 of those to each meeting. So there have been about 300 over the years to, who've been brought through that program. And again, they're being specifically guided through programs uh, and workshops and so on that go on at ICANN uh, that are relevant to their interests. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, then you'll be guided through a track of workshops that's relevant if you're interested in uh, legal issues and so on. So that's the way we structure it. I think there's different, obviously if it's a generic sort of meeting like the IGF, that's somewhat different. Um, we're also very involved in internet governance schools. We support a number and we tend to speak at them and, and bring knowledge either of the domain name system, ICANN, multi-stakeholder models, and also uh, just general knowledge about these things. Anyway, that's sort of what ICANN is doing, adding to what Carl had uh, uh, said earlier on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we have final. Thank you. Unfortunately, I have to leave. I have to catch my plane. Uh, but uh, thank you for organizing the workshop and for your comments and uh, share your knowledge with us. And uh, happy holidays, happy Christmas, and happy new year. Thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, because uh, we have 
empty seat on the panel is I think I would like to invite the original moderator to get back there on the on the table. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any final uh, questions before perhaps Susan wraps up uh, this uh, this conversation? Any final questions, comments, suggestions? Again, if um, you have thoughts on how any of these institutions can improve their capacity building uh, programs, please share them. Uh, there's a lot of money that's invested in capacity building and it's very important to us to make sure we do it the right way. Uh, we're learning, for instance, that um, we can use better some of the, uh, s some new tools. Uh, we have new uh, ways now to do uh, remote sessions uh, which allow us to not necessarily always fly in people, to train them physically. Um, so any feedback, any suggestions, I think would be extremely, extremely helpful. I think with that, perhaps um, I'll, I'll uh, ask Susan to wrap up the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Constance. And uh, uh, what, what was your name? Uh, Bredipta. Bredipta? Bredipta. Bredipta, okay, congratulations. Was thank this you. the first time on moderation? Yeah, well, not the first time in my life, but I, this is my first At time IGF. in Asia. Okay, yeah. very good, uh, <laughs> let me give you an applause. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Constance. I love the swapping that you just did. Uh, this was uh, excellent. <laughs> so I think uh, this is this is a, a good way of how we should approach, uh, in fact, our future work. We should be very uh, responsive and uh, we should be listening and uh, react accordingly. So that was a, a great uh, example of having immediate action. So. Um, I, I think we are already running a bit late and you may be wanting to go for lunch, but I would like to um, thank uh, everybody for having uh, participated in this uh, panel and also for you uh, coming and joining us. I think we will continue to work uh, together in terms of the providers of capacity uh, development, uh, the different institutions we have already had uh, uh, other uh, previous uh, uh, chances to work together. We will continue to do that. I think this is one of the issues that comes up always to coordinate our work and make sure that we are not working completely in, in isolation. And we will try to do that also in the future and uh, respond to issues that are being uh, brought up to us. So please feel free to always uh, make suggestions on, on what uh, we should be doing in this field. And I would like to um, invite you to look at the ITU Academy portal. This is our main uh, website for our training and capacity building activities. We are starting to create a new um, uh, space specifically for internet governance from which we are also uh, going to link to the different uh, other organizations work. And we are welcome to any suggestions if you know uh, of important work in this field, just let us know and we are going to also provide uh, links to those programs so that uh, we can, that's another way of trying to um, coordinate and, uh, and, and reach out and bring together the different uh, activities. So thank you very much again, especially to Constance, uh, Teresa, Tracy, Olga had to leave uh, 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 for the plane and also Khaled um, for uh, joining us here on this panel and uh, thank you all and I wish you good lunch, thank you.